Hello, my name is Samantha Montalegre and welcome to The Maternity Mentor. Today we're going to be talking about newborn jaundice. Thanks for joining us. For anyone who doesn't know me, I have been a registered nurse since 2009. I have spent my entire career working in the maternal newborn nursing area, including mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I have practiced as an IBCLC since 2012 and have been maternal newborn nursing certified since 2013. I have also received specialized training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as well as perinatal bereavement. Newborn jaundice is a very common condition. In fact, 60% or 3 in 5 babies develop jaundice after birth. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that all newborns are screened for jaundice before leaving the hospital. They also recommend additional screening between 3 to 5 days of life. This video will explore newborn jaundice and hopefully all your questions and concerns will be answered. Newborn jaundice is when baby's skin and eyes turn yellow. It occurs when the babies have a high level of bilirubin in their system. Bilirubin is a yellow pigment that is produced by the body after the normal breakdown of red blood cells. Bilirubin can be significantly higher in babies than adults, sometimes twice as high. It is normally processed by the liver, turning it into a substance that can be excreted in your baby's poop. Newborns have immature liver function because their liver is still developing, so this impacts the ability of the body to remove bilirubin. Jaundice is sometimes called hyperbilirubinemia or physiologic jaundice, and it will usually go away on its own within two to three weeks, often without treatment, as the liver matures eating improves, and the body produces less bilirubin. All of this is good news for your baby. However, there can be complications, which is why physicians take it so seriously. There are many risk factors that may put a baby at risk for developing jaundice. Major risk factors include a baby born prior to 37 weeks gestation, which is considered premature. 80% of premature infants develop jaundice after birth. Babies who aren't feeding well, either breast or formula, also develop jaundice easier. Reduced intake of milk reduces the amount of bowel movements the baby has. Bowel movements are one way the baby eliminates bilirubin from their system. A mismatch between the baby's blood type and the mother's blood type can cause a buildup of antibodies that will destroy their red blood cells, causing a dramatic rise in bilirubin. RH incompatibility is when a mother has RH negative blood type and her baby has RH positive blood type, which increases the risk of jaundice. Bruising from birth can also cause jaundice. One of the most common bruises can lead to bleeding under the scalp, which is called a cephalohematoma, which often occurs after a difficult delivery. Ethnic background increases the risk of developing jaundice, especially East Asian and Mediterranean descent. There are also certain factors that will make it harder for bilirubin to leave the baby's system, which can lead to severe jaundice. These factors include low oxygen levels or hypoxia, certain infections present at birth like rubella, syphilis, and others, babies who develop an infection in their blood called sepsis, certain medications the baby has been exposed to, disease that specifically affects liver function like hepatitis or cystic fibrosis, Genetic or inherited disorders, including Krigler-Najjar syndrome, which affects the enzyme responsible for processing bilirubin. Congenital hypothyroidism, which is where the thyroid is underactive because the gland is not producing enough hormones. Urinary tract infections. Internal bleeding or hemorrhage. An inherited enzyme deficiency called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, or G6PD. If you have a family history of this condition, let your healthcare provider know so that the baby can be monitored more closely. An abnormality in the baby's red blood cells, including sickle cell anemia, or rapid breakdown. 
biliary atresia, which is when the bile ducts or the gallbladder are blocked or scarred. And finally, babies who have higher levels of red blood cells, which can include small for gestational age babies, also called SGA, and some twins. In the hospital, your baby will be screened for jaundice, but not every baby is delivered in a hospital. Additionally, your baby may be fine in the hospital on day two, but then on day four at home has developed jaundice. It's important to know the symptoms of jaundice so you can contact your baby's pediatrician if you see them. The first sign or symptom most commonly seen is yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. It usually starts in the face and then spreads to the rest of the body. A common way to look for jaundice is to lightly press on the skin of the forehead or nose, and if the area becomes yellow, that is a sign of jaundice. This should be done in good lighting, with natural lighting being the optimal choice. There are several signs or symptoms that could indicate that jaundice is getting worse or your baby is experiencing severe complications. If these symptoms are noted, a call to your pediatrician should happen immediately. Your baby's skin becomes more yellow or spreads further. Your baby becomes difficult to wake up or is lethargic. Your baby develops a fever above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Your baby is feeding poorly or isn't gaining weight. And finally, your baby's urine becomes dark yellow or the baby's poop becomes yellow or orange. Additionally, if your baby has any other symptoms that concern you, you should contact the baby's pediatrician. You should call 911 if your baby has any of these other symptoms. Arches backward, has a stiff, limp, or floppy body, won't stop crying or has a high-pitched cry, or your baby has strange eye movements. Bilirubin usually peaks three to seven days of life. Most babies will start to have symptoms after three days and the jaundice will resolve after two weeks of age. For premature babies, jaundice can be delayed in development, not appearing until five to seven days and lasting up to three weeks of age. Jaundice diagnosis always starts with a physical examination of your baby. Your pediatrician will look for the signs of jaundice, including yellowing of the skin and eyes, as well as the color of your baby's urine and stool. Additionally, whether your baby has symptoms or not, your baby's bilirubin levels should be tested within the first 24 hours of life. This can be a skin test or transcutaneous bilirubin level, or a blood test called a serum bilirubin level. The skin test measures the reflection or absorption of a special light shown through the skin using a transcutaneous bilirubinometer. If the skin test is performed and is high, most facilities will follow this up with a serum bilirubin level, which is considered more accurate. Your baby's pediatrician may also order additional blood tests, including a complete blood count or CBC, blood type, rhesus factor or RH type, and a Coombs test, which checks for increased red blood cell breakdown. These blood tests are done by performing a heel stick, which is a prick of your baby's foot to collect blood. If the jaundice is severe or prolonged, your pediatrician may order additional tests to rule out underlying conditions, including a urine test, a blood test to check for infection, or a blood test to check for an enzyme deficiency. The bilirubin results guide your pediatrician in determining the treatment plan for your baby. Only about 1 in 20 babies will require treatment for jaundice. Mild jaundice will usually be left untreated and will resolve on its own. However, your pediatrician will probably continue to monitor your baby's bilirubin levels carefully. Any level of jaundice may prompt your pediatrician to monitor how much your baby is eating and encourage frequent feeding and supplementation if your baby is losing weight. They may also encourage you to start pumping if you are breastfeeding to increase your milk supply. In moderate to severe jaundice, the most common form of treatment is phototherapy. Phototherapy is the use of a special light that helps break down the bilirubin in your baby's blood, making it easier to leave the body. There are two main types of phototherapy. Conventional phototherapy is when your baby is placed in a special bed under a blue halogen or fluorescent light. Your baby will have 
soft goggles placed over their eyes to prevent any damage to them. Additionally, your baby will be wearing only a diaper, but don't worry about the baby being cold. The special bed will be warmed. Your baby remains in only a diaper because the light works best when the most skin is exposed to it. The other type of phototherapy is fiber optic. This is usually a flat pad that is placed on your baby's back and has the light shine through fiber optic cables. It is often called a billy blanket. Some facilities may offer conventional therapy first, others will offer the fiber optic blanket. If the jaundice becomes severe, the facility may use more than one light to treat the jaundice. Phototherapy will usually be stopped every three to four hours to allow you to feed your baby and change the diaper. However, it is crucial that this lasts no longer than 30 minutes. The more time your baby spends under phototherapy, the faster the jaundice goes away. If jaundice is severe, there are two additional in-hospital treatments your doctor may prescribe. The first is an exchange transfusion. This is where your baby receives a blood transfusion from a donor after having a small amount of their own blood removed. The idea is removing the blood full of bilirubin and replacing it with bilirubin free blood will dilute the total amount of bilirubin, thereby reducing it. This also replaces damaged red blood cells with healthy ones. Babies usually do really well with this treatment and respond very quickly, which means they're often able to leave the hospital quickly. If the jaundice was caused by a blood type incompatibility with the mother, an intravenous immunoglobulin or IVIG treatment may be used. IVIG is a transfusion of immunoglobulin, which is a blood protein that reduces antibodies in the blood. This sometimes reduces the need to have an exchange transfusion. Finally, your doctor will attempt to treat any other underlying causes they may have found, like giving antibiotics for an infection. The reason why it is so important to check for jaundice and treat it early is that jaundice can have some serious complications if left untreated. Bilirubin is toxic to the brain, so when jaundice goes untreated, the bilirubin passes to the brain and can cause permanent, significant damage. This complication is known as acute bilirubin encephalopathy. Signs of this disease include difficulty waking the baby, baby is listless, poor sucking or feeding, high-pitched crying, fever, backward arching of the neck or body, brief pauses in breathing or apnea, muscles becoming floppy like a rag doll, and even seizures. When acute encephalopathy is left untreated or causes permanent damage, this results in cornicterus. Some of the problems associated with cornicterus include athoid cerebral palsy, which affects movement and coordination, permanent upward gaze due to difficulty maintaining normal eye movements, dental problems, including poor development of tooth enamel and teeth, vision problems, hearing loss, which can be mild to severe, and learning disabilities. Fortunately, conicterus is extremely rare due to proper screening and treatment of jaundice in newborns. Breastfeeding does increase the chances of your baby developing jaundice. There are two types of jaundice that can occur in breastfed babies, but both are usually harmless. The first is breastfeeding jaundice. This usually occurs in the first week of life and usually happens because the baby is not nursing well or the mother's milk has not come in yet. The second is breast milk jaundice and usually happens after the first week of life. It can peak between two to three weeks, but low levels of bilirubin can last for a month or more. This occurs because substances in the breast milk affect the breakdown of bilirubin. If either of these types of jaundice develop, you do not need to discontinue breastfeeding, although your pediatrician may recommend some additional formula supplementation. Formula can usually be discontinued once the jaundice has resolved. If you have any concerns about your breastfeeding, contact a lactation consultant to evaluate your milk supply and your feedings. There is no real way to prevent jaundice. You can ask to have your blood type tested during your pregnancy and after birth 
your baby's blood type to be tested to rule out a blood type incompatibility. After birth, make sure you're feeding your baby 8 to 12 times per day. If you feel that your baby feeds poorly or is sleeping and you are breastfeeding, you should start pumping and offer colostrum that you get in a spoon or a cup. You should also ask to see a lactation consultant to evaluate your feedings. Additionally, whether breastfeeding or bottle feeding, make sure you track your baby's pees and poops to ensure the baby is well hydrated and eating enough as pooping helps to pass bilirubin. Remember to monitor all the signs we have presented. If you see any of them or are concerned about your baby, call your pediatrician immediately. Newborn jaundice can cause a lot of stress and anxiety for many parents. We hope this video has helped explain what to expect with newborn jaundice and helped you to understand what to look for and what treatment plans your pediatrician may use. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at the Maternity Mentor.